Okay, so we're moving along here and we're going to look at a bunch of different box duty examples. A bunch of different topics, a bunch of things, different things you can do. And each video hopefully will be somewhat short, just touch on a key concept in box D, look at the code example, move on to the next one. So one of the things we missed, if you recall from our first box D scenario, is we figured out how we could add make our objects move around and respond to box 2D physics. What if we want an object that doesn't move? What if we want a fixed object? We can see two scenarios of that here. One is, look at these platforms. These are actually shapes, bodies that don't move, static bodies. And the second one is actually this thing called a chain shape, which is allowing us to make this kind of terrain-like thing. So I want, in this video, we're just gonna look at both of these, talk them through, and kind of quickly look at the code. So the good news is, this one, incredibly simple. So if you remember, we had these steps, right? Well, we need to define a body, create a body, create a shape, create a fixture, blah, blah, blah. All of those steps, we worked it out for the fixed shape that doesn't move for that platform. We only need to change one thing in step one, we need to have a static body. Instead of a dynamic body, we just need to make it static. So let's look and see how that's done in this particular code example. So I'm going to try to pull it up now. Um, here it is. So if we look at it, so okay, so remember, one thing I want to point out about this, by the way, is this example also has a box. And I'm just pointing out a small little detail, which is that all of that code for all those five steps, which we do in the constructor, sometimes it's a little useful just to make a little function that kind of takes care of all that. So this, this, this example actually has a make body function. And if I scroll down, into the make body function, you'll see highlighted here this key line of code. The type of this body is dynamic. And that's for all these squares that are moving around the screen. But what about for these platforms? If we go into the boundary class, the boundary class is very sim similar. The only difference is the body type is static. So you can make objects with a dynamic body type or a static body type. The static ones won't move. So if you're making pinball and all of the bumpers are static and they don't move, those would all be static body types. So that's really easy. Now, this one is a bit more complex. So for this type of scenario where you want to make a terrain or a chain, an edge, some type of surface that has an edge that cannot be penetrated, this is a scenario where we, uh, we, have, um, we are making, it's a static body, but the, the way that this is defined is with a shape, a particular kind of shape, and that kind of shape is called the chain shape. So um, we're in the right place here. If we look through all these steps, this is the only step in the, in the scenario that we're modifying. So we're making a body, we're defining the body, creating the body, we've got to make the fixture, all of those parameters, and attach the shape to, that fi to the body, but create shape is what we're going to change. And the kind of shape we're going to make is a chain shape. So our first line of code for that section would just look something like this, creating a chain shape object. That's what we're going to do. Instead of a polygon shape, chain shape. Got it? OK, so how do we make? So polygon shape, well, remember we did set as box, and we gave it a width and a height. A chain shape is kind of an interesting thing. So let's just look at this scenario where we have, this is much like that game, I don't know if you ever played the game Tiny Wings, where you have this nice terrain that the birds kind of like f scoot along and jump up and fly, right? What if you wanted to create a terrain like this? Well, in order to do that, you would want to know what are all of the points along this path? What are all of these vertices? And it turns out to make a chain shape, what you need is an array of VEC2 objects that define all of those vertices along the path. So if I were to make a VEC2 object, and I can call this a vertices, and I were to say, ah, it's going to have, I'm going to have three vertices in my array of VEC2 objects, all I would need to do is say, hey, let me give vertex 0 something, vertex 1 something, vertex 2 something. So we make a chain shape, we make an array of vertices, and then, I don't know I ran out of room, we're going to stick those vertices into the chain shape. So that's the process. Now, one thing that's very important here is remember something important there. <laughs> one thing that's important, remember something important. One thing that we cannot forget is what type of coordinates do we need to put here? World coordinates. So we might know the pixels of our terrain. We need to convert those from pixels to world before we stick them in the array and before they go into the chain shape. So let's go take a look at that example and see exactly how this is implemented. So here's the code for the actual example that's running this particular sketch. And you'll notice something a little strange about this. I'm using an array list of VEC2 objects, and I'm putting the pixel locations of all those vertices into that array list. 
So what gives, right? Over here, we said, hey, we need to make an array of VEC2 objects, and we need to make sure we convert those and put those into the chain shape. Well, I've done something a little bit strange in this example, and there's certainly alternate ways that you could organize your code. But one of the things that we're going to need to do later is draw that that, that terrain, that, that chain shape on the screen. So what I'm doing is I have this array list where I'm going to stick all of the vertices in pixel coordinates in that array list to save it for later when it comes time to draw it. But when I create the shape, the chain that's actually going to be in the Box2D world so the Box2D can compute the physics, that's when you'll see here, if I scroll down a little bit, here what we're doing is we're saying, hey, let's make an array the same size of our array list, and let's take every ver ver vertex from the array list, convert it to world coordinates, and put it in that array. And that's what we'll make the chain with. So this is kind of redundant. We have two arrays, one for the pixel versions, one for the world versions. But I find that useful that you don't have to then later at, you know, be converting back and forth. If we just keep track of both in two separate arrays, the chain shape knows the world coordinates, the array list knows the pixel coordinates, it makes things sort of simple. So you can see here we're making the chain shape, we're, we're making the array, and then here's the function, create chain with that array. And this is a little bit redundant, but we're also telling it, hey, we want to use the entire array. So in theory, you have to give it the array of vertices for that chain shape, as well as how much of the array you want to use, in this case, the entire length of the array. And you can see that all the rest of it is making the body definition, creating the fixture, all of that. So, um, and then when it comes down to drawing it, in the display function, we're doing something very simple, begin shape, end shape, and drawing a vertex for every single one of those, um, uh, a vertex for every single one of those uh, spots in the chain shape. Okay, so these are two ways that you can create static objects in Box2D. Um, one is with, a, uh, with bodies that are fixed, that are static. Um, and the other is with a chain shape. So uh, two exercises you can think of doing. One is, hey, try to make one where those uh, platforms aren't flat but at an angle. How do you set the initial angle of a body and make sure you draw it at the right angle? Give that a try. And another exercise you could do is, this is just hard-coded values for the vertex vertices. But what if you used a sine wave? How would you create a ch um, uh, shoot? Uh, and I'm going to, uh, if I was faster on the draw here, I would have had this ready. But how would you do? something like this, where this is a very tiny window, I apologize for that, where the edge is actually a sine wave. Or could you use Perl and noise to create a mountainous-like terrain? Or how would you even do something where you create this nice, you know, Perl and noise to create something like this, like the, the, the terrain in something like Tiny Wings? So give those things a try. There's, there's answers that you'll find um, in the GitHub repository. If there's not, send me an email or write a comment. And um, the next video we're going to look at, um, I think we're going to look at making uh, more complex uh, more complex forms, either custom polygons or uh, bodies that are made up of multiple shapes.